Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas, recording episode, I don't know, 250 something. Uh, and super excited today because I have back on the show, I'm sure you've been on the show before. I have uh, the heart of the claims profession would be a good way to, 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 to put it. Uh, my brother from another mo mother, one of the nicest guys in insurance, the John Backman. John, how's it going today? Man, it's going awesome, Tony. Appreciate that. You're all too kind to me, man. I appreciate you. <laughs> I, I've told John from the beginning that, that I'm biased against claims. And uh, like Chris Stanley might be the most prolific claims writer ever. Uh, but, yeah. but nobody in claims comes to, to work with the heart that, that you come in and teaches claims people oh. the, the, the soft part of, of claims. And, 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 and you, you just do a fantastic job of it. And, and I, do, I do have to ask about the shirt because I, I saw it on, on your book announcement video recently and, and the, the yeah. Hulk Hogan reference really made me laugh. Uh, but yeah. but did, did you have it made or is this uh, part, part of no, Chris's no, no. shop? Or? You, nope, nope. Uh, you check out policytees.com. Uh, they do un unbelievable shirts, um, some pretty slick ones. Um, there's another shirt that I have hidden away right now because I'm going to be releasing another video series based on that shirt and everything. But so that will be coming up. But policytees.com, um, they make some amazing, and it's only insurance t shirts. Oh, that's fantastic. Out. Okay, I'm going to have to check that out. Policy. I wonder who owns that. I'm surprised you didn't know about uh, I, it already. I didn't know. Like, are you sure that's not Chris Stanley? Like, <laughs> Yeah, it's who, not. Who it's it's actually it's <laughs> it's run by uh, Brandon Smith. He's a, he's an insurance agent and speaker all over the country. I'm, I'm he, gonna he runs I, that I'm business. Probably connected. I'm gonna have to reach out, bring him on the podcast because that's fantastic. I'm gonna I'm gonna open that uh, so that I can check it out. Policytees.com. Okay, fa I did. Uh, I don't think I found it, but okay, I'll have you send me the policy. T e e s is how it's spelled out. Okay. Uh, very very cool. So so. So, so but John, before we before we make a shift, though, you said something in there, and I have to call you out on it. Uh -huh. um, you you give me all kinds of props. I, I, I me confess all kinds my, of my bias against claims. It, no, no, even worse. You said the soft part. Oh, okay, okay. That, that's 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 you know that that's that's fair enough. I and mean, in fact, my 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 mentor, former coworker, and a very good friend, uh, uh, the the the. Uh, the, the the fairy godmother of insurance, uh, Margaret Reese Millikent, uh, says the, the same thing. Like like what we used to call soft skills, there's nothing soft about them, and and I, I agree. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It's a misnomer. And, yeah, and so Gary Vaynerchuk's chief heart officer, um, her name is Claude Silver. I, I saw her once talk about that. Of we should never ever ever call them soft skills. You can call them interpersonal skills. You can call them the hard skills. And I said it once to somebody, I said hard skills, but my Boston accent must've came out and I said hard skills. I'm like, man, that's pretty damn good. That, that is good. That, 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 that is yeah. good, absolutely. By the way, for a Boston accent, yours is not bad at all. Uh, well, I can hide it pretty well. It, it can come in wicked bad some days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you are correct. The, the, what, 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 what has been referred to as soft skills, there's nothing soft, there's nothing easy about them. Uh, yeah. And, and uh, we probably sin in, in how little we train them, especially in, in our industry. Uh, and and I, 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 I was, I was going to, so, so, so when, when, when I started in claims, right? So and that's, that's the reason I'm biased because I started in claims. Uh, when I started in, in, in claims, uh, there was a lot of, of talk, and I never got to read it, but there was a lot of talk about a book called The Seven Habits or The Eight Habits of, of uh, Insurance Adjusters. So of course you have it, yes. Uh, right? The eight it's, Characteristics it, of an Awesome Adjuster by exactly, Carl Van. Exactly, exactly. So, 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 <laughs> so, so that book was very popular ar around the nationwide claims office in Des Moines when, when I was there. Uh, I never got around to read it, but, but, uh, but that was it. When, it when it comes to books about claims, that was it, right? And, and, and since then, uh, I've done a lot of collecting of, of insurance-related related books. And, uh, th but that was it for a long time. And, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I've never read it, but if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's much more technical than, it's not a, a, a like soft. No, uh, no it, actually, Carl goes into a lot of the interpersonal as well. Oh, okay. So okay. Carl's, a, 
so Carl, um, he's a great mind. I had the pleasure, and I was in a claims office early in my career that a lot of these things were taught. So Carl actually came into our office and he taught classes. We developed a bit of a relationship and we've seen each other throughout the years at different trade shows. I, actually, thankful enough, he, he contributed a, a lot to my upcoming book. Okay. Um, okay. I so this got is a spiritual him. successor? He, he is my spirit animal. <laughs> okay, so 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 your new book is a spiritual successor to to that one, basically. Well, in some not ways, exactly. No, 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 no. It, it's 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 you know, it's like anything I do. You might see a little bit of Hanley, a little bit of Tony Tanya, some things I do, but I'm my own animal, man. <laughs> okay. So 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 after that one, which apparently I was mischaracterizing, my apologies. At least I admitted that I haven't read it. Uh, after that one, then came Chris Stanley, and his yeah. just library of, of guides, right? Uh, which for the most part are pretty technical, right? Exactly. They're short and yes. technical. Uh, and, and I'm so glad he's doing them, like so important, right? Yes. Okay, so so so, so, so we have the Carl Band book. We, ha we have the Chris Stanley 26,000 uh, guidebooks. <laughs> uh, and now the John Backman. So, so tell us about, about, about your book. Yes. So uh, teamed up with Chris as well, um, like you mentioned. And coming out with the successful adjusters playbook. So it's it he's gonna in the long run get it in that playbook series with everything else. But you nailed it. There is so well, think about it. you have your collection of insurance books. Mm -hmm. There's hardly any claim specific books out there in the world. Yeah, the, the, the Carl Bond one was the only one I was aware of before Chris's books. Yeah, it, it, and there's a there's a few more out there, not very popular, um, not widespread. Um, but Carl, he has the characteristics and what makes a good really comes out to be what makes a good employee it is really what it's all about in his book. And then technical wise, there are so many resources and Chris does a good job of making it short, sweet, actionable items that people can do. But when I sit back and I think, and you said it earlier about uh, the heart skills or the interpersonal skills, it's really the most important thing that separates one adjuster or one claims division or one insurance company from another. And we're not teaching it. And there's no resources for new adjusters or even a hey, salty old veterans. If they want to get a little better at X, Y, and Z, there isn't something out there. So there was a big gap. And I've had this playing in the back of my mind for four or five years. And finally, I was like, you know what? I need to, I need to wrap it up. I need to do it. It's not at all surprising that that you had a that you had a book in there. Like, like I think we all knew uh, that, yeah. that that it was in there. Um, yeah. Okay. And, so, and, and really, that's where uh, it's all those little videos that I did, the insurance nerdery. That's all kind of it, it was in here, and I just needed to get it out. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to say that that during during, during the intro and the co-host of, of uh, the sixty-seven episode run best insurance production ever uh the insurance nerdery uh, yeah that that was a lot of fun uh amber and i we we loved it and we we held each other we said you know what we have to do it every week for at least a year and then you said 67 that's the, I, I know we went over the, the the quality of oh the, the, the production quality is just fantastic you guys really it, knocked it, it out of the park yeah it was a lot of fun. Still get a lot of feedback of people. They stumble upon them, however they're doing their YouTube searches. And I, I got one today. Uh, somebody on LinkedIn reached out, said, saw your Hulkamania one. But then I went down a rabbit hole, found insurance nerdery, and said, thanks for your Gamma Iota Sigma, because he was a Gamma. And it's like, that's that's crazy to think that people are still catching it. That, well, that, we that, stopped that's... That's the thing in, in, our, in our very underserved industry when it, when it comes to, to, to how to grow and, and, and when, it, when it comes to, to there's the insurance journal doing the news, but that's kind of like there's just not a lot of, of insurance media for, for people that work in the industry. Uh, and, and so, yeah, the stuff has very, very long lifespans. Like insurance nerds yeah. doesn't produce, produce that much content today, but we have a gigantic library that, that is not, that is not forgotten in any way, shape or form because there's no competition. There's very little competition. 
And you know what? It's so important. And I'm thankful to you. I, I mentioned it in the book about how we got connected. I think you were hawking a book at the time, actually. It, <laughs> ensuring tomorrow. Um, but um, it, it's such an important message for the younger generation. And back, you were talking millennials then. Now it's Gen Z now. Um, there isn't a voice and somebody speaking to those folks. And yeah, there are other media outfits out there that are doing the, the acquisitions and they're the talking news. about the, yeah. the, the, right, the news, but nobody's talking about how do I make a long and uh, powerful career for myself? And, 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 and tell you what, it, it is like, like, yeah. And, and, and there's Irmi doing the technical resources as the Institute is doing education, right? Uh, but but yes, the, the career piece of, of, of it, uh, it is a there's so much need for it. Uh, and, and because I, I get the same thing, I get tons of messages for, because of insurance search articles and, and videos. Uh, and uh, in my tons of people grab time and chat with Tony to, to, to have the same career conversation, uh, right? Because we as an industry don't do a good job of teaching it. So, so is this is this the missing instruction 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 manual for insurance for for claims careers? Is that what you finally wrote? Yes, for for the interpersonal because we have the resources. The companies are teaching us how to use the systems, how to estimate how to make a recorded in, uh, interview, d doing all the technical things. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing a good job about those skills, about listening, active listening, about truly caring about the other person on the other line or when you show up at an inspection and empathizing, actually trying to put yourself in their shoes so you can tailor the way you handle that claim for that individual. And it's not just a policy number or claim number where you keep going to the next one, next one, next one. That's what this book is all going to and, be about. And, it, you know, I started insurance 2009. At that point, field adjusters were starting to become less common uh, compared to, let's say, 95. Uh, and and that, that's continued. We still have field adjusters, but there's less and less of them. And after COVID, there's less and less of them. Uh, and and the, the more that we, the, the, we the, the more that we deal with the, the client by phone, and with large geographical di distance, the harder that that piece is, right? Like, and the more important that it is to teach our adjusters about the yeah. empathy, about uh, this is real people. This, this are this, they're, uh, yeah. This claim might might be a a small claim in in your you know 120 or 150 open pending, but for that person, that that small claim could be gigantic. It's the biggest thing in their life. They, odds are it's their first claim and odds are they'll never have a claim again. And how you treat that person could really end up being if it's a policy that's going to be renewed or if this person is gonna say, you know what, insurance sucks. I hate insurance. I never wanna to have to buy it. Why, why the F do I have to do this? Uh, which it, it's crazy to think that one adjuster handling one call at one time can have that impact on an industry. But that's the case uh, in all too 100%, often. 100%, yeah. The, the, uh, the, back when I was at Nationwide, the, the number they told us is, is uh, in personal lines, 5% of our clients have, have a claim in any given year. So, so the other 95% won't have a claim this year. Uh, right. So we, we get very little chance to, 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 to help them understand what the heck they're paying for. And, and sure, when you're sitting at that claims desk, all you're seeing is claims all day. You think oh, every customer has a claim. Uh, everyone's trying to get one over on me. It's, mm -hmm. it, it gets to that mindset. But if you speak to sales folks or you speak to agents, what's their percentage of people that are it's extremely small that will be actually having a claim? So when they have a claim, the company, the adjuster better do a damn well good job handling that claim just to keep the business around. Um, but beyond that, there's so much more of marketing more business, using the claim story. Uh, and I get into that as well, into the book as well, that a claims adjuster is not just handling claims. You're a retention specialist and you're a market, marketing specialist too for your company. So uh, how, how long is the book? Uh, 150 pages or so. It's, okay, it's, so, so, it's so a it's, quick read. It's still a quick read. L yeah, like quick like read. Chris's yeah. uh, series in general. Yeah, it, because you know what too? I know myself, I, 
I try to be a, a better reader than I am, but when it comes to nonfiction, it, it's a struggle for me. And I, I'm assuming like most people that handle a claims desk, they have other, other things that they need to worry about. And it's not sitting down and spending hours and hours trying to read through a manual. Uh, so I, I try to be mindful of that. Uh, I try to make it as entertaining as I do most of my other things as well and try to have some fun stories in there um, while still being educational without it being too dry. Okay, so, so, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun, quick read that will make you better at claims uh, and will, gives, gives you the tools to thrive in what can be a difficult job and yeah and, and you know what, too, i've had a couple people uh, a couple other people that have read through it and said you know what these aren't just for claims this is really any job within insurance and it goes even further they say you know it could be any career because a lot of the things that i talk about are the things that just get you on the same page with your customer it's getting on that same page being able to make that connection to serve their needs so if that need is to resolve a claim, that's to resolve a claim. But it can be probably used for many other, but it's focused on claims. That's who I am. That's who I care about. <laughs> okay. Um, so it, it's the book you, you I, what I'm reading within the lines, it's the book you wish had existed when you started in claims. That's exactly what I, I um, so one of the, sections in the book is just where it all came from and who would the book best be for and i said it was me early on in the career because early in my career i didn't have the passion for it I'm, I'm getting a paycheck every two weeks and most of that check went to beer money so i could party on the weekends that's <laughs> that's what my job was as an adjuster um and i said you know what that punk kid could use this book uh, and could understand, you know what, I have a much bigger impact on that insured's life. I have a much bigger impact on that claimant's life. And you know what, even for some of those salty veterans that are just in that going through the motions part of their career and, and they might feel like they're stuck, this might be something that pushes them over that plateau, gets them up to the next level as well. So um, I think the first person it's best for is early stage adjusters, early, early stage claims examiners uh, to really get the impact of what their role is, because it is so much more important than we really sell it as. Oh, without question. I, I don't know a single carrier that really communicates, uh, especially within, within, within claims, but that really communicates how important what we do is. Hey, I, I, I've been blessed that the claims organizations I work for really were customer focused and claims customer focused. But to be honest, other than splashing NPS numbers or customer sets questions around, did we really do as good as a job to tell the story of, hey, Tony handled this claim for XYZ claimant and here's the words that she said and how well he helped her through this. That should be blasted everywhere it should be blasted on the website on social media it should go to the team meetings to boost your ego as well as boost the ego of your team and get people to strive that way we don't do a good job of that we we really need to to change that a little bit okay um i don't i don't think remember did i even did i, did I ask you the title of the book I don't think we ever said it early in the chat. Yeah, yeah the, the title of the book is uh, the Successful Adjusters Playbook, The Secrets to Providing the Best Claims Experience. Okay. Everything needs a subtitle these days. <laughs> uh, and for, for the listeners, uh, the word playbook means it's, it's part yeah. of, uh, of uh, Chris Stanley's uh, large collection of, of claims focused books. Yeah. Uh, so so, so there, there's a couple back there. I, I was blessed enough to uh, help him out, write a couple of those too. And it's, it's going to be part of that bigger program, uh, but it's going to be a standalone. Um, I'm excited about it. And what makes me even more excited about it is when I get texts from Chris saying, I've never done so much book for an IA path book. And I didn't even write a word of this one. <laughs> so that gets me excited. 
to know he's that invested on a book that um, really it, it was me. And then the foreword was, uh, was Carl Van. Fantastic. Well, John, th thank you for coming on the, on the podcast to talk about, about the book. I, I'm glad to, ha to, ha to have you back uh, directly in the industry since you recently uh, made a change kind of back to your roots, although a new side of, of, of your roots now, now that you're uh, VP at, at an agency. Congrats on the VP title. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, excited about it. Yeah, it's, it, you mentioned on, on the other side, and I've always been on the carrier side or the claims and customer experience side of things and to now be on the agency side because a lot of my friends in the industry um just because of what we do all the time you probably see this too tony I, a lot of friends that are agents and they're always pushing me saying hey we need a claims guy on this side we need this and i'm excited about it man so a lot of big things going on over at norwood insurance coming up here too and fantastic uh, thank you so much for joining for joining me today. It's always always wonderful to chat. Hopefully, I'll actually catch you live somewhere in the next, uh, you know, uh, in in the next year after after being trapped at home for eighteen months, just about. Yeah, I, unfortunately, I thought I was going to be making it to Insure Tech Connect. Unfortunately, I'm not, not going to be there. It's too bad, but uh, oh, you never know. But I don't expect to be there. <laughs> you, you you guys did did, did get to do. Uh, one in-person conference. What was that? CLM or or was it F, uh, PLRB? I, I thought I, I saw that you and Chris spoke somewhere in person a couple months ago. Oh, that that was a that was a um, a remote one as well. That was oh. um, exact wares and bear risks um, elevate conference. That was a remote one. Uh, they they were gracious enough to have us there. We were talking about how. Um, adjusters can better prepare themselves for better roles in the future. Uh, that was a fun conference. So, okay. So no, nothing in person yet. No, actually you mentioned PLRB the day the world shut down. I was about to go to the airport on that Sunday morning to go down to DC for that PLRB and that conference center got shut down. And I was supposed to go from DC, spend a few days there out to San Francisco and then the world ended. <laughs> it, it's been a crazy ride. It, it absolutely it has. has been a it crazy has. ride. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I did get to do uh, the Global Insurance Symposium in person about two months ago. There was kind of that lull where, where like Delta hadn't gone crazy yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it was really weird to be in person. Uh, and and I'm supposed to be at CPCU uh, in Orlando, of all places, right, right, in, right in Florida. Uh, we'll see if that happens. By the time this goes live, I'll either have gone or not gone. Uh, and, and, and then I'm supposed to be at Insure to Connect. Uh, that one, I'm I'm feeling. Uh, I think that one will actually happen. They're actually required. Requ like you have to prove show proof vaccination. Uh, so so uh, I think that one will actually happen. Uh, but yeah, it's for for extroverts. It's, it's been, it's been different. <laughs> yeah. You get sick of those four walls in your home there, don't you? <laughs> uh, you know, this, this is a floor to ceiling window, uh, east facing. Uh, so I have, so I have that, I have a lot of, of natural light. If, if I lift the blind, like it's a lot of natural light. Uh, and, and we have zoom, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's been, it's, it's been, this it's is the long. life we live in now, right? Here. This is the life that exactly it has its, its advantages remote, uh, be, being a, a very nice advantage. Um, well, and actually, not to completely extend this conversation more, but I think it proved a lot of points that you made early on. Thank you. So I, it, it, I used to get so frustrated at carriers and agencies that would say, you know what, I can't have my employees work from home for a number of reasons. One, it, well, how can I trust them? First of all, if you can't trust your employee at home, you Don't probably shouldn't them. have them as an employee anyways. Right. But second of all, the technology. Oh, we can't do this. We can't do it. Well, you know what? When you had to do it, you did it. Yeah, ex ex exactly. Um, exactly. Uh, I, yeah. I hear you. That, that part has been very interesting for me. Uh, and as we record today in, in uh, late August or mid-August of 2021, uh, most carriers are, are there uh, where, where they get it. Uh, they're... Whether 
whether they're there happily or or they got dragged you know by 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 uh by, by the pandemic but 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 they're there they have more remote people than ever and and they know that this is the new normal uh, uh agency side a little bit harder I, I think i think agencies are being a little more resistant on average some are super enlightened but but uh i think there and 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 part of it is is there's agencies that that that, that have uh walk-in traffic right and right and that, that yeah you you're always going to need some people to handle that my, my yeah. agency we we get we get people walk in all the time um so absolutely but we also have an employee that's working in florida now awesome like you if we talked about this a year ago or now it's 18 19 20 months ago mm -hmm. um people would be, think that's crazy yeah it just wasn't um, a thing for the most part yeah yeah, but it. I think it was a very good thing for the industry. I hope the industry keeps a good eye on it and says, you know what, it's a good thing and it's not just something we had to do um, because those people that think it was a have to do, they're going to lose employees. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Uh, it, it's yeah. it's quite clear from the, from the surveys uh, that, that the competition is keeping a lot more remote than they used to and even a lot more flexibility for their in-office people uh, it, it, you either come around or you're going to lose people. They no longer have to right. move, right? They, they no, they, they no longer have have to have to to change states to to uh, to be able to work from home. And for for you guys on the on the adjusting side, you've got a stressful enough job. Uh, letting you work wherever the hell you want to work it, I, I think is a very good thing. Uh, and yeah, if if if. Like, like look at the productivity it's it's that simple right? like like if we have All to the learn. Studies show that the studies show those happy employees even with less time are a hell of a lot more productive mm -hmm. yep yep and and they'll be happier without a commute uh and they'll yep. be happier working from where they want to work and and closer to the family uh yep it's it's a whole new world and and uh, i i think yep. Oh, the industry is adapting much better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I am rather impressed at, at how well we we we've adapted and and how well we seem to 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 be making the move going forward. Uh, and, and we and you know what too, it, not only did they do well, they did it quickly. So all that talk about how oh we can't move to a new claim <laughs> system because our technology is behind bull crap on that they can move fast when they need to move fast. yeah it, 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 it turns out if uh if i legally can't have people come in uh turns out the technology moves very quickly yeah we always leaned on technology was holding us back no no it was backwards thinking <laughs> I, I hear you I, I hear you john always great catching up with you uh thank you so much for coming on the show uh no, I, and, uh, I appreciate you, man. It, it means a lot. Uh, thanks again for having me on. I, I, I love, hey, insurance nerds, it's in my blood, man. <laughs> th thank you.